What's up guys, Justin here with TheFusionEssentials.com back with another Autodesk Fusion 360 tool tutorial for you. In this video we're going to talk about combining some different tools to create a more complex shape inside of Fusion 360. In this case we're going to make use of the intersect function that's contained as one of the solid interactions whenever you work with a tool. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So to start off what I wanted to do is we wanted to create a sphere and so you can do that by going into the solid menu going down to create and looking for the option for sphere. So, and in this situation, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna set this based on the axis or the central axis point. So we're gonna set this on the flat axis and then we'll single click and this will place our sphere in here. And then what we can do is we can just resize this to whatever we want. So in this case, I'm gonna say this is gonna be 50 millimeters. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna remove half of my sphere because what I want is I want this to be more of a half sphere. So the way to do that is just to come in here and create a sketch that's on this base point or this base uh, axis right here. You can just draw a rectangle across it and click finish sketch and then you can use the extrude tool to extrude this down in order to remove that. And you can see how the operation goes straight to cut in this case which is what we want so we're gonna go ahead and say okay. And so what that did is that left us with a half sphere which is what we want. And so now what we want to do is we want to take this half sphere and we want to use it in order to create our different fins. And so I like to have a plane up above this object rather than down below. It really doesn't matter all that much, um, but I'm going to go ahead and create an offset plane. That's going to be offset from the uh, axis between the red and the green right here. So I'm just going to select this plane then I'm just going to drag this up and I'm going to click OK. So all I'm doing is I'm just creating a plane that I can draw on that's gonna be above my object. So now we wanna go into sketch mode. We wanna draw a sketch on that construction plane that we just created. So we're gonna click on that and then we can come in here and draw. In this case, all I wanna do is I wanna use the fit point spline in order to rough out kind of a fin shape. So we're assuming this fin is going to go through our object just like this. And so all it needs to do is we just need to make sure that this curve extends beyond this edge right here. That's gonna be really important. And so once we've done that, we wanna offset this so it has a little bit of thickness. So in this situation, I'm gonna offset this to we'll say negative one millimeters. So we'll say these fins are gonna be a millimeter thick. And then the only other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna draw a line across this edge and I'm gonna draw a line across these two points. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna fill this in. And then we're gonna click Finish Sketch. And so what we've done is we've created a fin profile up above our sphere. So now we can use the Extrude tool to extrude this down through our object. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a different kind of operation than we've really done before. So in this situation, we don't want cut though that would create kind of an interesting shape, but we don't wanna cut this. What we wanna do instead is we wanna use the option for intersect. What intersect is gonna do is intersect is, the intersect function will only keep the geometry where this uh, profile intersects with our object. So what we've done is we've basically used this to create our fin. So if we click okay, you can see how this is now in here as its own body, and it's just this singular object. And so what we wanna do is we wanna take this and we want this to continue in kind of a circle. So in this situation, in order for this to continue in a circle, what we wanna do is we wanna use the circular pattern tool. So we're gonna go down to pattern, circular pattern, and we wanna create a circular pattern around the central axis. So the central axis, and we'll just make sure we're getting the right one, is going to be right here. So we're gonna click on this. So what this does is this creates a circular pattern with multiple different copies of this. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna turn our quantity up to, let's go with eight for right now. I think eight is gonna be good. So we're gonna click on okay. Well, what that's done is that's come in here and that's created eight copies of this equally spaced around a circle. And so now what we wanna do, because if you look at this, there's kind of some gaps in here. We don't necessarily want these gaps, so we need to fill those in and kind of make this a complete, more uniform shape. And so the way that we're gonna do that is we're just gonna use the join function um, with the extrude tool. And so the way that we're gonna do that is we're going to create a sketch. And in this case, we're gonna put this on our base or our flat axis. 
So we're going to click right here, or the flat axis plane. And then we're just going to come in here and we're just going to draw a circle or a circular sketch based on this center point. So we want to mouse over this center point, single click, and then we want to draw a circle. We want to draw a circle with a radius that goes out to this point right here. And so what that's going to do is that's going to kind of fill in our gap. And so now we can click finish sketch. We can go back home and we can extrude that up through our object. And so you're going to notice when we extrude that up through our object, it goes into cut mode, which is not necessarily what we want. We actually want this to go into join mode. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set this so that it goes up 25 millimeters, maybe a little bit higher, maybe 27, we'll go 26. We'll extrude this up so that it continues up 26 millimeters and we're just going to set our operation to join. And so what you're going to notice is when you set our operation to join, what this does is this removes out all the additional geometry that's in the circle um, wherever it intersects with uh, this extruded shape and it just leaves us with this circular shape and it joins this with the bodies around it. So now if we click OK, what that's done is that's created it's taken this whole thing and made it into a body. Well, when this got made into a body, this is now a solid shape. So if you wanted to 3D print this or something like that, you could export this in order to do that. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a hole down the middle using the hole tool. So we haven't talked too much about that. I'm gonna make a video about that probably in the next week or so. But basically the way that the hole tool works is you give it a face that you wanna cut a hole in. So in this case, I've clicked right here. We want to give it a reference that's going to be the perimeter of this object. What that's going to do is that's going to center this on this object. And then from here, we can do a lot of different things, but I'm going to set this as a counter bore. And I'm going to leave this threaded. So I like that this threads this object. And just notice that if you had like a specific kind of bolt or screw or something like that, um, when you thread this, you can select the size of that profile down below. So there's a lot of different options in here like Acme screw threads if you wanted something like that. Um, but you do need to be a little bit careful just to make sure you're not setting this so that it's bigger than the object itself. And then the only other thing we're gonna wanna make sure that we do is we wanna make sure that this hole goes all the way through this object so you've got a hole coming out the bottom so that if you had a bolt or something like that um, it would be able to extend all the way through but we're going to click OK and you can see how that leaves us with this solid object with a place for a screw to go with these different fins and it was really easy to create. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Is this style of video helpful to you? Have you created shapes like this? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Autodesk Fusion 360 content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.